Okay. Uh oh, I hear an echo. Okay, so um, if you go to, this is actually a DOT project. So we got um, a highway safety improvement grant. The DOT applied for it. And this is for everything that's outside of the downtown area from Grendel Lane down to Decker, to South Street, and down uh, to Rusk Avenue. And I'll show you a picture of this. So they have this on their website. There's a presentation that they put together. Unfortunately, because it's not a really complicated construction, they didn't do anything further than this presentation on their website. Um, there will be a uh, information meeting here at City Hall, I believe, once the contractor is selected, and then they'll start talking about the staging of the construction. So they'll do more of like the construction side, in this situation, there's not gonna ever be a closure of Main Street, right? It will just be them moving from one lane to another. So if you ever wanna go to the DOT website, they have their own presentation there. So like I mentioned, where this is, so we're talking all the way up Brenda Lane, which is like your tractor supply, just north of uh, Walmart there. And it goes all the way down to South Washington Avenue and there's that gap that is what we are calling the downtown. There's actually a project that's gonna happen there in 2024. And so we've got Decker is included or Highway 56 is included in this one. Um, but from that, just south of that to South Street is not included in this project. And this is just their other image. It's kind of hard to see. That's why I brought the other one up but these are the cross sections from the plan. And there are also things along the wall if you wanted to take a closer look. Okay, so why did this project um, come to fruition? So Highway 14, it's our busy Main Street, right? We've got, it infects residents, visitors, everybody of all ages and abilities. It's how you get to school, it's how you access businesses and all the other things like the hospital, the library, these all drive down Main Street. And so the DOT had analyzed a period from 2014 to 2015, or 18, excuse me. This application actually came in in 2020 originally. And then when they did that, they saw that there was 116 crashes during that period and 38 of them were rear end crashes. So that was what triggered them to make these, um, to per apply for, because they applied internally for the money to do this work. Um, and we also, it also came from the city because we continue to hear about concerns for pedestrian crossings on Main Street. And, you know, I highlighted a few at Decker, West Broadway, downtown, pretty much every crossing. We've had some public meetings and we had one about the downtown and people got to circle dangerous intersections in town. And I think almost every <laughs> intersection with Main Street was circled. And so, you know, it was just um, across the board there. So in 2023, so this year, like I said, it's gonna happen after July 4th, but before August 31st, they're gonna be restriping the current four lane configuration and making it into a two lane section. And what they call it is a twiddle, you'll hear that, a two way left hand turn lane. So what does that mean? So a two way left hand turn lane means that there is a center lane in the median that allows traffic to take left hand turns that are off that main drive, right? So there's gonna be a lane that's going north and south or going north, one that's coming south and in the center, you're gonna be able to pull out to make your left hand turn. So we're actually going from four lanes down to three. And why is that? You can, I'll go a little bit more into the twiddle, but the idea is that it actually is gonna keep traffic flowing better and then you're gonna avoid some of those um, more dangerous situations where there's left-hand turns or even right people turning right. Uh, we're going to reinstall and install the rapid flashing beacons at West Broadway and Oak Street. So when I say reinstall, we already have some at the hospital, right? If you cross at Oak Street, you see those rapid flashing beacons. So we're just going to reconfigure that to meet ADA compliance, basically be in the same location. But we're also gonna install one on West Broadway and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. And then there also is gonna be some changes at the Decker intersection and Main Street. 
Okay, so why a twiddle? And I realize I'm missing an L on that title. There you go. Um, so what happens when there's a two-way left-hand turn lane is that there's a redu reduction of rear end crashes. There's no issue with left people coming behind people from a left-hand turn. So like, I think about this all the time going into Culver's, right? You're driving, going north, and there's always people turning into Culver's and the person behind them has to stop. They often will drive around the person turning left and all of those situations are um, causing a higher hazard. So it effectively moves traffic by removing left-hand turn vehicles from the th through lane. So when you're driving down that through lane, you're not gonna have to stop for people turning different directions, right or left. Um, it provides better access to side roads and driveways. Uh, it provides fewer lanes, travel lanes for pedestrians to cross. So that's another big one. So we've got the concerns with people in their cars driving and hitting other people that are driving in vehicles, but then there's also the concerns about pedestrian safety and crossing. And so in a twiddle configuration, and I'll show you an image of that shortly, you will see that the pedestrians have a chance to cross one lane at a time instead of crossing all four. And I always think about the fairgrounds crossing. That one is probably the one of the worst ones in town. So if you're crossing there, you have to look two lanes of traffic coming from the north, two lanes of traffic coming from the south before you can try to cross or else you're gonna be stuck in the middle if you're lucky. <laughs> um, and then it's actually easier and safer for emergency vehicles because they're not in peak periods because they're not dealing, they can use that center lane. Um, and so this was, as I mentioned, a highway safety improvement project and it's funded by the DOT. So the original project estimate, which there's still bids that are coming in, is that it was about $500,000 and the city paid about $60,000 for the total project. So there's all of the construction costs are the DOT. So this is what the cross section of a twiddle looks like. You've got that center lane where you have left-hand turns that can go in either direction. And then on each side, you have a driving lane going one going north, one coming south on Main Street. And there's also that section along the side where there is no drive lane. So some images, this is a, you know, a, uh, a digital rendering, digital rendering of a uh, twiddle. So you got your two-way left-hand turn in the middle and your drive lanes on either side. And the same thing here where you can see what, how the configuration is. Uh, this is an example of the twiddle that is in cross planes. So I drive to Madison a lot for my daughter's hockey. And I was, as I was driving, I'm thinking, there, we are one of a few places on Highway 14 that actually don't have themselves set up like this. Um, and again, you, you're trying to keep the traffic moving on the two lanes going in each direction, and then the twiddle allows for those turning movements to happen. This is really hard to see, so I'm gonna zoom in, but this is the section from down um, on the south end of town. So just before Rust Avenue is where that change will happen. So it's actually outside of the city's construction limits. So just after Washington Avenue, but just before Rust Avenue, and I'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can see. Um, and then there is on the south end of town also gonna be the RFD at Oak Street. And there were three other intersections that we looked about putting those flashing beacons in. One was Maple and um, it will have a median and a designated left-hand turn lane. So there'll be within those left-hand turn, um, that twiddle within that in certain intersections will actually be a designated left-hand turn. All right, so hopefully this is a little bit easier to see, but you can see, sorry, I keep wanting to walk away from the microphone, right where the S is on Washington, the label there is where they start tapering from that configuration where there are two lanes coming northbound. And then there'll be a left-hand, designated left-hand turn lane at the rust intersection. And then it'll just be the standard twiddle formation. So if you think about how you come into town now, it comes in and there's four lanes and then when you're at the hospital is where you start turning into that two lanes again. Cause it's in downtown right now, there is two lanes, right? 
So that's one thing to think about. A lot of people, you know, well, isn't one lane going to slow us down? Well, it certainly is going to going to change how we move through the downtown. The downtown is already down to that one lane in each direction. Yeah. I would zoom in more, and I certainly can, but the pixels get hard to see. Yeah, there's a left turn coming in. Whereas this one goes to like FF Drive. Yeah. And so if you're turning from Rusk Avenue and you're going south, the benefit to you here is that you don't have two lanes coming at you coming from the south. You'll have a single lane coming from the south and you'll also have a single lane coming from the north. I like it here. Let's see if I can do it. Traffic quick and gray. Okay. Not currently. Um, we have talked some about the accident that happened there, and I'm awaiting a response from the DOT. But if you are there and you, you'll have, you know, only one lane to tr to cross going each direction. And that's one of the big things about this configuration is that you're just having one left lane on uh, coming from either direction to contend with. And yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so it is not set up properly for ADA compliance and it's also kind of getting you into a driveway instead of an actual apron. And so they're setting it up so that it's meeting all ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we are gonna stick with the same setup that we have there, which is that like the, it detects you when you go into the crosswalk. So that you're gonna have to, on a bicycle, you would have to trigger the sensors that are on that crossing. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So the question was that time, um, if you were on a bicycle and you are on the west side of Main Street and you're crossing at Oak, is there a button for the bicycles to press when you're crossing? And so the way that that crossing is currently set up is it's actually a sensor. So there's those two um, bars or um, pedestals on either side. And as you walk through it, it automatically triggers it to come on. Um, and we're not doing that on the one on the north. Um, the hospital had paid additional funds to get that sensor put in, hoping that it would be used more. And so we're leaving it as is, but the other one will be a button that you press, the one that will be at Broadway. Uh, it will be, you would have to go on the sidewalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's about having like designated bike lanes and having a spot to press, which um, we actually have a planning grant that we received from the DOT that we're anxiously awaiting their approval of all our contracts to get started. And that would be great input to have because um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out where bicycle and pedestrian accommodation should be in the city. And so those are the kinds of things that we can build into the plan if that's what you know people are recommending and then apply for those for other grants. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, the city is the one that's responsible for the RRFDs. It's not, that was one of that. So that $60,000, about 40,000 of that is specifically 
related to us paying for those RRF fees. And so um, we have a bit more control there. So I will certainly look into it further. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, can I? I'm wondering oh, if my annotation button has stopped me from being able to change my slide. There we go. But it kept it on there, Nate. How do you undo? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Learning as we go. Okay. Okay. So this is that Oak Street intersection that you're talking about. Oh my gosh, I need better controls here. Okay, so, and we can look at it over here as well to make it a little bit easier. Um, I'm not being successful zooming in. When I zoom in too much, it's hard to see. Um, but what I wanted to show you here was, so this is that Oak Street and so there's the RFEs, there's going to be the changes to the ramps, but there's also going to be this corrugated median. And so where there's a left-hand turn lane, and again, it's kind of hard to see when it zooms in like this, but when there's a left-hand turn lane and there's certain intersections, we are putting this median in. And that median is can act as a refuge. So people, as they're crossing, again, can go through one lane of traffic and they can stop in that refuge area and then deal with the traffic that's coming northbound. Um, and then obviously this is where the RFVs are. And that is the same configuration you'll see on West Maple without the RFV at this point. And those, that's one of the locations that we're gonna monitor to decide whether or not that RFV is warranted. Like how long it's on. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so on the north end, again, these are really hard to see, but the same sort of idea, that four lane configuration going to a three lane with the quiddle in the middle. So again, that, that rear end, left hand turn and side plate crash prevention. Um, and there's less lanes to cross when you're a pedestrian. Uh, we have those medians with the RFV at West Broadway, and then there's also those medians that are happening at the fairgrounds and East Broadway. So trying again to make us uh, being able to see this, and I know like this, the image quality is challenging. Um, but again, we have that same configuration. So this is fairgrounds road here, Main Street, and you're going to have a left-hand turn that you can make onto fairgrounds. There's a designated left-hand turn lane here going northbound. And on that same side, there's gonna be that corrugated median. And when I say corrugated median, it's not a full curb head. So it's not gonna be something that you may run into with your vehicle. You will notice you're running over it because it's like bumpy concrete. And again, this is another one of those intersections that we are considering for an RRFV. And I think I added their image here. Yeah, so here's the actual plan that we have, the plan set, and you can see a little bit, it's got a lot of notations on it, but, um, and this is flipped. I had flipped this, how did it flip back? But in any case, so this way is north on this one. And so as you can see, you'll have this corrugated area with a crosswalk and um, all of these curbs are going to, and sidewalk areas are gonna be ADA compliant. It's not intended as a refuge for a car. Um, you probably, could make that movement, but that's not what it's intended for. Um, you mean like Walmart? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 
to yes, to a certain extent, it would feel similar to what Walgreens is now or Walmart is now. Except at Walmart, you have two lanes coming in each direction. Still, and I actually have that. I think that's the next slide. So again, not super easy to see, and they're only painting the changes that are happening. But this left. Um, so this would be the southbound lane on the west side. They're converting it over into a one lane. So you're going from a two lane going southbound to one lane before you get to the Walmart parking lot. And then this same thing on the other side, it's basically the same configuration as before. And I have a better image here. Um, so currently you have this right hand turn in, that will still be here you'll have one lane coming through going north. So right now you would have two lanes coming north. And the same thing on the southbound lane, you're gonna have, it's gonna be narrowed down to one lane. There's a left-hand turn into Walmart, but you're not gonna have a left-hand turn plus two lanes. It'll be a left-hand turn and a single lane. So that will then allow for, again, less, you're contending with less traffic going north or going south. Where it used to be two lanes, it will be one going north and one going south. Correct. It will, it should hopefully not have people sideswiping and that's, um, you know, obviously an enforcement side issue um, we don't want to lose pavement, so they're not, you know, narrowing it down. That would be the other alternative, right? Basically, it's a restriping project, and that's why, you know, when the DOT looks at it, they're like, we're not doing a lot of construction. We're not, and so they don't see it as something that they're changing, but obviously it's changing the way that we're driving, right? Um, the demolition that will happen will be at those medians and where the corrugated, so in the um, Walmart configuration, that's not changing, but like at Fairgrounds, East Broadway, West Broadway, Oak Street, and Maple, they are taking concrete out and putting that corrugated median in, but it's not um, changing the general lane. Yeah, well, it's not being labeled as a bike lane, but clearly there's more space for people. Um, and then it's also available for people turning, turning right, right? And so it's not a full lane, it's only four feet, but it's giving more space for people to get out of the way. Uh, that was the council decision that was made when we first started talking about it. Um, you could always ask for that to be different, <laughs> um, but that was the decision that was made, um, not designating it. Less paint, less concern about, you know, it, while it is space, it's still not the friendliest road to be biking on. No. Well, again, that same idea is that really it shouldn't be used for the purpose of like, waiting in a vehicle, um, but yeah, it's, I have done that myself, <laughs> but it isn't, it's not intended, even now it's not intended for a place of refuge. Um, but again, the benefit here would be that instead of seeing having to make sure you're crossing two lanes coming at you from the south, you'll only have one, and then you'll have that single lane going left. Yeah, so currently there is a median already there. 
right? There is a, a median right here in the middle because it just north of here is actually a five lane shuttle, right? So there's that center lane. You can turn left either direction, although there's not a lot to turn into, right? Maybe um, the Food Enterprise Center, uh, but there is concrete here already and on both sides and they're not taking that out. They're leaving that there. So they're showing like this image is showing what they are painting. And so that these markings will be new, but there will, they're not taking the medians out that are currently existing there right now. So like, I guess you can't really see it in the aerial photo very well, but there are, there are medians that exist there now um, that will not be taken out, that will be staying the way they are. Like we talked about the RFD, this is your rapid flashing beacon and there'll be that one that's added to West Broadway. And then there's those three other locations where we're considering putting it in. So that would be Fairgrounds, East Broadway and um, Maple. Those three locations, there could be ones in the future, but we wanted to see what was happening with the ones that we're gonna be installing and seeing what happens with traffic there. Correct, yeah. So of all of these things, um, you know, we were certainly obviously consulted along the way, but that it is a DOT design that's changing. Mm -hmm. um, but the RRFDs were the city uh, initiative to be put in, yeah. And this is just recapping what I just mentioned. So we're relocating the one at Oak Street and the, there's West Broadway is going to be new. That's that blue dot with the S and then we're monitoring the other locations. Um, and so the West Broadway, East Broadway intersections, just looking at a little bit closer here. Okay. So north, we're going those towards this direction or this direction for you. Sorry, it's different on my screen. Um, and we're going to have designated left hand turn lanes going on to West Broadway. We're going to have the rapid flashing beacon. We're going to have the median, the corrugated median. And there's the two way left hand turn lane. There's a short section going to be in the middle. And then there is going to be another designated left hand turn lane onto East Broadway, the crosswalk, and the corrugated medians in the center. So, really, the twiddle in this, like the way that it has it configured in the center here, you know, that's the consistent theme throughout the cross section. But then when you get to these key intersections or there are going to be pedestrian crossings, that's when you see a designated left hand turn lane the corrugated medians and the crosswalk. And those crosswalks are changing slightly. They're making sure they're all ADA compliant. I believe it's all yellow. Like they've colored it yellow where it's gonna be yellow and white where it's gonna be white. Yes. Uh, there will not be one on the middle. And the reason being is that if there was an emergency vehicle that needed to come through, that they wouldn't be hitting a post, right? So you you would hit the button and you would be able to start your crossing, but you can pause in the middle. It is not a true um, refuge median. Those are usually eight feet wide. And so that may have a button in those situations, but there was a choice not to have a button in the middle partially because we just didn't have the space in the roadway. And I keep forgetting to repeat the question, so I'm sorry. <laughs> and usually it just stays flashing in a similar pattern. Um, I'm not aware of being able to change that pattern it will be that yellow light, like that um, light that you see very similar to like when you're crossing at the, the hospital. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that's a whole other conversation. Um, but there is development that um, has been proposed there on the corner for some residential and a little bit of commercial. So um, this will happen before them. Yeah, I think the intention is to clear up that site triangle because it is really bad. Yeah. All right, so another big one is that Decker or Highway 56 intersection with Main Street. So there are, is gonna be a number of changes there, including bump outs. And the idea there is to clarify it down to the single lane traffic pattern. So I know that seems really odd because as most people drive in Viroqua, we drive as if there's a right-hand turn lane there, but there is not a right-hand turn lane. That's just how our traffic flows, which certainly adds to the complexity of the intersection, right? I think that's one of the main um, issues with the safety of that intersection is just how complex, how many things are happening at the same time. Um, so we're gonna talk about that one a little bit here as well. Um, so here's the intersection proposal, or as it's being designed. I think a couple of the key things is on, nor on Main Street going north or south, the intersection's gonna be the same. So right now, there's not a designated right-hand turn lane going north. It's designated turning left, but it's also going straight, right? Whereas when you're coming south, you can only turn left. So those now are gonna mirror each other. Again, sort of that simplification of the intersection. Um, we've got these bump out sections here. So this is the old city hall building. There's not anything that's changing here um, at the time. And it's still, you know, we're, we're not, um, we don't know the fate of that intersection yet. Um, but this is like the old opera house, the Mr. G's corner, um, and this, um, I guess, I don't even know what the good reference there is. Um, this has that apartment building on the corner here. So that would be north going this way, south going this way. So these bump outs are here to drive traffic into that single lane. And not only does it make that single lane happen, but it also forces the trucks to turn a wider radius. So for those of you who are familiar with the high number of traffic signal knockdowns that we have, a lot of that has to do with we're giving the trucks a really hard turn to make. Like it's just, we're, we're setting them up for failure to be from the beginning, right? Um, so there's also another couple things which related to the trucks there. And you can see how the straight lanes, the left-hand turn lane and the through lane are staggered. That again is to, to help the semi and the larger truck traffic so that they can make that um, overturn. And the same thing on the side. So there's, a couple things they're doing to make it so that the trucks have an easier chance of making their turn and being able to be further away from those traffic signals. So obviously changing it down to a single lane going east and west is making things different and possibly more congested. And so that's why we have a signal change as well. So this is a map depiction of the phase changes. So right now we have what's called a two phase signal, which is the light turns green on Main Street, traffic goes north and south, turns red, green on Decker, traffic goes east and west. So now instead of two phases, there'll be three phases. So the light will turn green on Main Street, traffic will go north and south. Then that light will turn red and then on the westbound traffic, so this D here, that um, this traffic on this side will get a green light and that way they will not be contending with traffic coming from the west, right? And so now, instead of like pulling out and wondering if the guy across the way is turning left or not, or is behind them, is that person going straight or is that person going in the right-hand lane gonna come out at me? You won't have to worry about it. You'll be able to go straight, turn left, turn right. You're not gonna have anybody to contend with. So as they have, like, ex you're gonna have exclusive rights in the intersection. And then that will turn red and then C traffic. So the 
um, eastbound traffic will go and they will also be able to go straight left or right. And so the idea is that while you will be waiting for your light, you will not have to worry about waiting at the light for the traffic coming at you when you're on Decker. So from both directions, yeah. So I think about I, every time I go in that intersection, you know, you pull out, it's a short light to begin with. And then again, you're looking at, is that person turning left? Or are they going straight? And so you won't have to worry about that anymore. That traffic should just keep moving, right? Because everybody on the east side will be able to move. Everybody on the west side will be able to move. And that again goes back to that whole like simplifying the intersection more, right? It just makes us more aware when we have less to contend with. I myself have almost got hit at this intersection. And, you know, I think about the truck that was coming at me. I mean, the, the, the amount of things that they had to think about at that moment, there's a lot going on. We, I was their last thought, the pedestrian, right? At least at this point, that person is not worried about the person coming from the east or the west. They just know that they are gonna turn right and they can look for pedestrians. Uh, sorry. The cross section of the bump outs, not on this slide. Yeah, um, the, it will be like a ray, like a curb, right? It's just basically that that curb will come out and that sidewalk area will be larger. It'll just extend out. So that's why there's like these small these panels here. Not currently, and at this intersection, I'm suspecting we probably won't um, add it. Um, in the main street, the downtown, so that's happening in 2024. Those are certainly things that we would be looking at um, just because, you know, we're, you're in the downtown. This intersection is just super busy to begin with, right? Um, yeah, well, and you know, um, it'd be interesting to see what the future of all of these, this area is and, you know, um, Dr. Kors area here, you know, it's a nice, beautified area so we will see um something we could always consider but i'm i would imagine that the concern would just be like making sure the sites triangles are there so hard to see anyway it is a full curve yeah mm -hmm. I was just thinking about that the other day is like how I believe that you will not be able to turn right on red when there are people coming when you're yeah when right already yeah I'm not exactly sure what happened they talked about it and then it didn't come forward um, but we certainly did talk about that at one point in time that no right on red on the Decker side. because the bump out would have to be on Main Street. So it's always on like the, it's the, you're coming from directly. So it would be like here, right? And it would be, this actual radius is ideal. They fixed that one. Yeah, but well, it, it looks like it's kind of, but this is matching in with a sidewalk that already exists on Main Street. And so what they you would see is that they would then come into that straight through lane with the bump out, right? And so they did not do any, they're not putting any of those extra sidewalk sections into Main Street. Yeah, they did not want to move forward with changes to that, not knowing what the future of that corner was gonna be. And they don't have a lot to fix with it as it is currently. But feel free to ask them that question when they come do the construction stuff. <laughs> so I, you know, I sit here as a representative trying to explain what the DOT is gonna be doing, but um, they certainly com consulted with us, but this was, you know, their, their plan. So I'm happy to go back and look at any slides that we have. Um, there's some images on the wall that make it a little easier to see. That's really the short of it. Um, I'm happy to answer questions and go backwards too, like I said. So 
you want to look at anything that we show them. Well, so the way that the DOT did the feedback for the project was that anybody that was like what they deemed affected by directly were sent a postcard. And the postcard showed them the presentation, how to get to the presentation, and that then they were expecting feedback that way. Um, I believe they didn't get anything. Yeah, I, so the changes aren't happening in front of any of the houses directly. Um, the only houses that would be impacted would be like um, at Maple. There's houses on the west side there at that intersection. And then at Broadway, um, on the East Broadway intersection, there's like a home right on the corner there. Yeah, there'll be less of a drive, they'll like be forfeit less of that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The idea is that it hopefully will be easier to enter, but yeah, that section is challenging. I mean, it is going to be different for them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think that, you know, I think a lot about that section. I think some of the benefit that's realized is kind of undone by the changes that are happening there, right? Like people are rushing because now they're merging, right? It's a hospital and there's a lot going on with that as well that, you know, does it make it easy? Like even the turning left into the hospital there um, that's really challenging for people because now you're stopped and there's only one lane of traffic. So people are, are driving into the area they're not supposed to. It kind of encourages them to do it probably more than they do anywhere else, right? Like on that um, no driving area. Yeah, so I finally remembered to ask the questions or repeat the questions. And so he was asking about whether there was any further public input on the downtown section, what's happening in 2024. Um, for the most part, like the main setup, the configurations with one way streets, the configurations with bump outs, that is planned. Um, there's still work about like, what's the streetscape gonna look like and you know, how does that, you know, all those intersections look like it's more of the sort of the softer components that are not decided yet. Um, but there, we did select what we called option 2C, which was those one way streets, um, the bump outs and the signal change. So um, I don't wanna get too off topic, but um, yeah, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was finalized. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we did. We did have those input sessions, and then um, all of that information from the planning firm was presented to the council, and then um, the selection of that one alternative. So in terms of crosswalks and crossing, so in that design, it showed that the traffic signal that currently is at Jefferson will move to South Street, and then a rapid flashing beacon will be at Jefferson. So there'll still be a crossing, yeah. Nothing at court um, besides the bump outs. And the same thing with Jefferson. So um, Happy to get, you know, to talk about that uh, um, in the future and we'll certainly have more um, things coming. But again, some of that stuff, the benefits come from um, having more set traffic patterns, having less left-hand turns happening in those lanes where people are backing up behind them. 
having less opportunities for vehicles to go around a left-hand turner, um, and then just having pedestrians having a better sight before they cross. I always think about crossing at the banks and trying to get through so that even pedestrian traffic even knows you're trying to cross because the cars are parked so close to that intersection. Good point. Yeah. Correct. You. Correct. Yeah. Um, so it was a part of trying to have that traffic control um, without having to put a like physical barrier in Main Street. So, you know, being able to not have people turning left, right at all intersections. But again, happy to talk um, and there'll be a lot more information coming about all of that too. The option was selected, yes. <laughs> that was finalized as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, in the one slide that we had with the rapid flashing beacons, that was there, it's just happening in 2024. Right, that is still what we're working on. Mm -hmm. How that is all gonna look. And that was certainly a big component of that, that place making um, the parts that we needed to determine at last year um, were just like knowing where the crossings were. So you would, I was doing a DOT seminar today and they say like 256 days per intersection you should be giving for a project. And so those kinds of things had to be decided so that they could start doing the work they needed to there. Yeah. But um, the DOT isn't involved in our landscaping so that you know has time. All right, well, I know there's a lot here and I hope you take a peek at um, the images. All of these images are online as well and then you can really zoom into them better. Um, the quality is obviously better on a screen than it is on the projector here. Um, the DOT is gonna have meetings about construction and how they're sequencing it. Um, and so hopefully that will happen in the next month before they get going, which is planned currently for after July 4th. <laughs> I sure hope so. I will get a handle on what that is and also um, make sure that gets advertised. Oh, absolutely, sorry. So yeah, this is how to get a hold of me as well. Um, you can call the office, you can email me. Um, this information is on our website. And I will say the DOT does do a nice job of the construction website. So if you go to um, the DOT website right now, you can find that presentation that I showed you at the very beginning. Um, but they have that 511 website that's about all the construction information that says like what days they are, where they're gonna be. Um, they actually do a really good job of that part. So um, hopefully they'll be sharing all that information when they do their meeting. All right, well, thank you very much.